right on top of it do we guys a parallelogram? If you go back to your notes on parallelogram, what is the exact definition of a parallelogram? The exact definition, mind you, not your definition. Quadrilaterals, maybe? Or look in the back of the book. It is what, Tyler? Quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. Quad with two pairs of parallel. Which means, okay, we've got shapes that we already talked about that are parallel enough that we deal with on a daily basis. You have a rectangle. It's a parallelogram. Why? Because the definition of a parallelogram is that it has to have two sides that are parallel. A square, mind you, is also a parallelogram. But when we think of parallelograms, usually we think about if you were stepping on this thing and it started to lean a little bit, usually we think of shapes that look like this, where two of the lines are slanted like that. That's usually the shape we think of, but these are both parallelograms because they fit the description of it. And today we're talking about nothing more than the area of parallelograms. Okay? And I'll simply give you the formula for the area of parallelogram. We have to be careful with this. The area of a parallelogram, the area of a parallelogram equals area of the parallelogram equals base times Parallelogram equals base times height. Now, the parallelogram gizmo gadget thing that you have to remember is the same as when we talked about the triangle. How do I know what the base and the height are? It's the same with the triangle. When you talk about base and height, these two things have to be perpendicular. which means they have to form right angles. So if I take this shape right here, ladies and gentlemen, and I tell you that this is 10 inches and this is 8 inches, you will tell me that the area of said parallelogram is... Carter Westfall? 10 times 8, which equals 80. You could not be any farther from the truth. No. I just finished telling you that the base and the height have to be perpendicular or form right angles. Do those lines form no. right angles? No. Again, I try to trick you a little bit here to make you think a little bit. You cannot find the area of that parallelogram as it is given to you. The book will have to... If it's a true parallelogram like this, they'll have to either give you a dash line like this that gives you a nice square corner, maybe it's seven inches, or they could extend this out like this and give you a dash line like this that says seven inches. Either one they'll do. But you have to pick the two that make the right angle, part for sure, and that would be this 10 and that seven. The area equals 7 times 10, and area equals 70, whatever the I said, the inches squared. It has to be base and height, just like when we talk about a triangle. 
You can't find the triangle if you're only given this as 6 and this as 5. Somewhere they have to give you a dashed line that gives you a nice right angle. And that is the case. Now, why does it work just multiplying the sides together for a square or a, a rectangle? Why, Mr. Hartman? I'm asking you, because I think um, you're capable of this. I mean, why does it? Why can you just multiply one times the other here? Wait. They all form right angles. Yeah, because every side is a right angle, so you can't help but get right angles. Just to show you what a right angle is. Got that? I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty cut angle. All right. Let me see if I give you anything cut than that. No, they will always give you. Oh, yes. So, look at, look at page 409. Let's just talk about this. Are you on page 409? Look at example letter D. Read it to yourself as I read it aloud. Example D, find the area of a parallelogram of vertices, blah, 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 blah. What would be the area of a dilation of this parallelogram with a scale factor of 3? How are we going to go about doing this problem, Amelia? Step number one. Draw it out. Draw what out? The parallelogram. The starting parallelogram. So let's look at that. Let's actually, let's actually, and you have an advantage over me because you have squares on your paper, but I am going to draw it out. So here is my rectangle. Give me the coordinates. Somebody read it up. Amelia, first one is what? 4-2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. I'm going to label that 4-2 so I remember that. Second one? 2, negative 2. 1, 2, negative 2. Next one? Negative 2, negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2. And the next one? Zero, next, zero, two. Zero, two. So I get, I'm oh, sorry, I should have wrote that down. Zero, two, and this one was uh, negative two, negative two. So here's my parallelogram. That's what you'd see on your paper. What is the area of that? Here's where it may take a little bit of thinking. And you know that area of parallelogram, you have to do base times height. Well, what is this distance from here to here? One, two, three, four, correct? Mm -hmm. But you say, I can't find the area of that or the length of that. It doesn't matter because that's not perpendicular to it. So you are going to have to draw your own perpendicular line, which there just happens to be one right here. And you can find, how tall is that? One, two, three, four. So the area of that little guy parallelogram right now is four times four, 16, whatever it is, units squared. If you counted those squares in there, it'd be 16 squared. Now, unfortunately, the problem's not over. I have to do what? It said to dilate it by a scale factor of three. How in the world do I dilate that with a scale factor of 3? It sounds so complicated, Carter Westbaum. Anybody? What do I do if I want to find? What's a scale factor of 3 going to do? Multiply by three. I multiply every number by 3, which means this. The new point here is going to be 12, 6. This is going to be 6, negative 6. This is going to be negative 6, 6. And this is going to be 0, 6. And then you have to plot those points. 4, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 6, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6, 6. Sorry, negative six, negative six. Two, three, four, five, negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
And then 0, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need to see this new rectangle drawn in full, blown out, living. Oops, I kind of got out of control there. Now, here is where you are going to go wrong, almost guaranteed. It says, how many, what's the, wait, what is the question? What is the area of that? And right away you're going to say, well, if the area of the small one was 16, and it's, a, and it's everything is times 3, the area of the new one's 48. It is not. It is not 48. Don't even think that. Do the math. If I do this, what's the distance from here to here? This was 12 over there, and then it was 6 back here. This is 18 wide. I guarantee if you count the, the thing there, it'll be 18. Oh, wait, sorry. No, it isn't. It's not there. It's, it's 6 over there. Sorry. 12. And then how high is this thing? 6 from there to there, and 6 from there to there. What is 12 times 12? Your new area is 144. There are a number of